We're not on yet, are we? No. no. I'm waiting for uh, Michael. Oh. Okay, Mayor, we are live. Okay. Welcome to the Oakland Mayor and Council meeting. Today is Wednesday, February 10th, 2021. Roll call. Mayor Schwager. Here. Councilman Bialy. Here. Councilman Kamala. Here. Councilman Pignatelli. Here. Councilman Talamini. Here. Councilman Banak. Here. At this time, take a moment of silence before we begin. Thank you. This meeting is being held in accordance with the open public meetings law duly announced, submitted to the newspaper and advertised more than 48 hours in advance of the meeting. And notice has been posted in the municipal building and on the borough website. And we are following all the procedures set forth by the state of New Jersey for virtual meetings. And as I begin with my mayor's report, Last week, I had the pleasure of administering the oath of office to our three brand new police officers. It was at the senior center. We did it at the senior center so that friends and family could participate and watch their uh, child or fiance or a brother, sister, take the oath of office as an Oakland police officer. And we, we did it here to social distancing and everybody wore masks and it was very limited group of people. And the three police officers were Jacqueline Jensen, Matthew Lopez, and Jonathan Lyons. So we welcome them. And if you see them in town, just say hello. Uh, we're very excited that we have um, three new young police officers. Once again, kudos to our DPW employees for their outstanding job of keeping our roads clear. Um, they worked day and night. We have a lot of snow this year already. More is predicted. And um, they work hard. And especially at night when it's and after a long day, they're working very hard. And so a lot of people have been calling us what happens if their mailbox gets damaged. And you will hear about that tonight. We will be discussing and telling you about an ordinance that we will be, will be discussing about if your mailbox does get damaged by a snowplow from the DPW, from the borough, or the procedure you have to follow for reimbursement. But regardless of that, thank you to our DPW workers who worked very hard to keep those roads clear. In fact, I hear from many people, they always know when they come into Oakland as after a snowstorm, because as soon as they get to Oakland, they know the roads are clear and the black top, they could see the black top. Oakland, um, now I'm going to talk about the new testing site we have in Oakland. Oakland is now hosting a mobile COVID-19 testing site. It's located at the Oakland Senior Center parking lot. You register online and then you drive up to the parking lot. You stay in your vehicle, you must wear a mask, but um, I watched it when it first opened on Saturday you stay in your vehicle, stay in line. The attendee comes to you, gives you the test, and then the results are supposed to come back, uh, uh, they say, within 24 hours. The testing is scheduled for Monday, Wednesdays, and Saturdays. Monday and Wednesday from 10 to 6, and Saturday from 10 to 3. Remember, though, that you must wear a mask when you drive up. To register for the appointment, you go to test, that's T-E-S-T dot oaklandnj dot online. And when you register, you can make your appointment. If you have insurance, you list your insurance information. If you don't have insurance, you list that you do not have insurance, but it is still free. It is of no cost to you. Then as I was standing there, when I met people as they were driving up, 
they asked me about the vaccine because you've been reading in the papers that some towns have become vaccination sites. I made some inquiries with the mayor's rep on a mayor's call and all the mayors had the same complaints. What about our senior citizens? To get a vaccination appointment, it, it seems to be the luck of the draw. You know, timing is everything and staying on the internet and just, just going back and forth on the internet. And what happens to the seniors who don't have access to internet? So I am very um, lucky tomorrow there's going to be a call in with all the mayors at 11 o'clock. And it's specifically the only issue to be discussed will be vaccines and how we can help our seniors. So if I get any information whatsoever, I will make sure that we, we get the information out to everybody. But right now, if you are a town that has a vaccination site, because I, I, I got that question, I found out that the towns who were able to be listed as a vaccination site were towns that had a full-time registered nurse and doctor on staff. We don't fulfill that requirement. But even the towns that are advertising that they are vaccination sites, they don't have vaccinations. They don't have any of the vaccines. So um, it's going to be a wait and see. And hopefully I will have more information to give out to everybody after my call tomorrow. I'm going to end my report on a very high note that Oakland is now silver certified from Sustainable New Jersey. Thank you to our green team and all their efforts to um, get us to be a silver certified community. To become a Sustainable Jersey certified at the silver le level, Oakland submitted document documentation to show it had completed a balance of the required sustainability actions, meeting a minimum of 350 action points. In addition to reaching 350 points, the community had to create a green team and select at least three out of 12 priority action options. We are very lucky. It will help us with uh, applying for grants. Um, it just is a very nice honor. And there is going to be, um, it used to be a luncheon, but it's going to be a ceremony. It's probably going to be Zoom on March 11th. It is a virtual awards luncheon. So I guess you're supposed to eat at home, attend the awards via Zoom. And um, that's on March 11th on Thursday. And um, our community will be honored. So thank you to all the members of our green team for your, all your hard work, the time and your effort that was put into it. And with that, I'll entertain a motion to open to the public. So I moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 We have a very long meeting tonight. So we're requesting that everybody to try to keep your uh, comments to the three minutes that is, is really listed on the agenda. It would be very much appreciated. And please don't keep repeating the same things um, because we, we have a big, big agenda and we don't know if we're going to make it until midnight. So with that, Michael. Welcome to tonight's council meeting. If you wish to provide public comment, please click the raise your hand icon or star nine on a mobile phone. You will be unmuted and recognized. Thank you. Michael? Mayor, I, I see no one further. Motion okay, closed. Mayor, I, I have a comment that was emailed to me. Um, it's from Michael Verost from 72 Algonquin Trail. Okay. And it's about the Monhegan Ave parking. And he wanted me to read, will all streets in Oakland have complete parking restrictions in order to prevent side swipes and if not, why does the council not care about the safety of those streets? That was his comment? That was it. Okay, thank you. Um, most to close? I moved. Second. 
I'm Will trying to raise my hand. I can't get through. Who How do you do that? Hand? Who's raised the hand? Mayor, resident Brian Riley. Okay. Yeah, sorry about that. I couldn't figure out how to raise my hand. I, I was clapping, I think, trying to <laughs> trying to get your attention. So, um, so hey, so I'm I'm Brian. I live over at 30 Andrew Avenue. Oh, I just want my video. Hey guys. Hi. Um, so I, I sent through an email last night to the mayor and council regarding the draft ordinance for the management of chickens in town. We've sent a couple communications at this point, probably starting in October through present. Um Thanks to those who have gotten back to me, really appreciate that. We've been working diligently with the Board of Health on this in uh, crafting the document, honing the document, getting it to a good spot. Um, you know, I, I do appreciate them taking into consideration our feedback. And there is um, there is a matrix floating around, I think, at the back of that ordinance that shows all of our inputs in the various types of categories and all of that. So we've, we've all shared our own notes and it's been compiled. Um, one specific concern that I have, and I have emailed about it, is around Regulation 18 specifically. So um, that is the animal control officer shall have the right to periodically inspect the premises to ascertain compliance with these regulations. I just want to call out um, animal control is a private entity. Something like this basically is very open-ended. It allows them to access property pretty much at any time to check things out, probably giving them more rights than police in town as well. <laughs> So I just want to I want to call that out. It was something that we were not aligned on as chicken owners, and it was actually it was struck out of the working document that we had uh, talked about, and then it was re put into this new draft ordinance. So just want to call it out. They they are a private ent entity. Obviously, there's some skin in the game for them as well. So th this is incremental hours, probably on top of their existing scope, having to patrol and police 50 plus. Uh, chicken owners in town, you know, one or two hours a piece. That's probably two to three incremental weeks of work for a full-time resource over there. So I just want to want to make sure that there's alignment with the town, and you guys all understand that 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 is in fact in there, just because it is um, it is a pretty strong regulation to include. Um, just really quickly, we also we had asked just about the overall. And, are you freezing, or are we all freezing? Am I freezing? Uh, we, we can hear you. Okay. Yeah, it's fine. Okay. Um, so we had asked just how all this had come about. Um, and it was it was shared that there were some complaints. Uh, and we had asked around qualitative and quantitative details. So volume of complaints, frequency, what the complaints entailed, all of that. Um, no complaints were able to be furnished. So there were none on file with the town. Um, Tyco, the animal control um team also had mentioned that they've received complaints directly, but upon further questioning, they couldn't share that any of the complaints actually came from our town. They may have come from surrounding towns and chickens could create complaints in town, but they hadn't done so. So I, I just want to throw that out there as well. There haven't been any complaints on file as far as we all know of chicken owners uh, and Tyco hasn't received any complaints as well. So we're, we're just trying to understand, I guess, why this even came about, why we're spending time on this. I sent I sent the note right before the meeting too. There's a lot of other you know interesting pressing things that are being talked about, especially on like the Oakland Facebook group. I see what's going on RML. You have the guy that just dumped a box truck of stuff on somebody's property and it's not getting cleaned up. So this hasn't spurred any complaints, and we just want to understand a little bit more as to why there's so much passion and energy around it. So that's all I have from my side. Thank you guys very much for entertaining my comments. Anyone else? And your next up, President Stephanie Tufararo. She's on mute. Hello, hello, Council. Um, I'm Sue Stephanie Tufaro from 67 Monhegan Ave. Um, I was here a few weeks ago discussing the uh, Monhegan Ave restriction parking. Um, are there any other options that we can discuss or go over just to promote safety as well as, um, you know, think about the residents with their parking, um, if that's an option. I know myself and some of the other residents on Monhegan would love to um, discuss that and see if we can come up with other options. So we can at least park as well as make it safe for the pedestrians walking. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else, Michael? Yes, 
Okay. Hi, Christina Miller, 38 Heath Road. Um, just to touch up of what, um, and Steve Miller. Steve my Miller, 38 Heath Road. <laughs> um, just to touch on what Brian um, was saying, uh, say no to the chicken ordinance. Um, we're not pleased at all with the way it is written, um, nor about the, um, um, I don't know if you want to add to it. Well, just the fact that that there's an ordinance with so many restrictions and guidelines uh, when originally all that was asked for was that the size of the property be reduced to allow people with smaller yards to have chickens. Uh, you know, as Mr. Riley mentioned, there haven't been complaints. So this ordinance of, of 21 paragraphs just seems like uh, overkill, uh, overreach, uh, a lot more government control than necessary. And uh, we're, we're just asking for the council to just say no to the ordinance rather than try and negotiate all the points, just, just say no. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor, next up, Martha C. Was that Michael? Mm hmm I, I don't know what he said. Someone named Martha C. Martha? This is from London, Martha Kahina. I'm speaking for my mom. Mom, say hi. Hi. Before you have to give Avenue. your address. This is Egan Avenue, Oakland, New Jersey. I live at 38 Amherst Avenue, Oakland, New Jersey. I'm speaking for my parents at 64 Egan Avenue. They also have I can't hear you. We're having research. trouble hearing you, sir. Could you wait till the next part of the meeting? Because we're really having difficulty understanding you. So maybe you could Can fix you the equipment. Now? Come back. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. So I'll be quick. So I we just have no. my parents to be for money. No, we can't hear you still. So maybe you could fix it and then at the open portion later you can speak. We can't we can't understand you. I'm sorry. Hello? Michael? Hello? Michael. Mayor, next up, Dale Grider. We don't understand Michael either. Uh, that was Dale Grider is next up. Oh, you understood Michael? I understood that somehow, yes. <laughs> he speaks binary code. Okay. <laughs> so Dale Grider, if you could give us your name and address. Hi, uh, Dale Grider, 68 Monhegan Avenue. We can um, hear you. I Oh, good, good, okay. <laughs> okay, um, I would like to talk about the parking situation. Um, my husband and I have lived on the street for almost 35 years. We had no idea we weren't supposed to be parking on either side of the street. Um, I looked up the regulation today regarding some streets that are connected to Monhegan. Um, so if you come off of Franklin Ave, Lakeside Boulevard, the part that's in Oakland, um, you, I guess, are allowed to park on the east side because it's prohibited on the west side. Then the next road that it turns into, into is Ramapo Hills Boulevard, and that is only prohibited parking on the southwest side. Um, I understand why part of Monhegan, there would be no parking at all because there's a hill you can't see. There is a sign there. But where I live, it's a straightaway. And they're really, if these, if Lakeside Boulevard and Ramapo Hills Boulevard can have parking at least on one side, um, I don't understand why the straightaway of Monhegan can't. And I wondered if maybe that was why in the uh, regulations it was written two separate times, one for no parking either side and one for parking only on the west side. Um, and then I think one of the major problems on Monhegan is the speed limit people do not follow the 25 mile an hour speed limit. I mean, people go on this road 40 miles an hour or more because they use it as a cut through. They get off 202, they come up 20, they take Monhegan and then they go out to Franklin Ave. Um, you know, I don't know if something could be done about that, but if people drove more carefully 
for sure there would not be any issues. And I've never had any issues on the street with parking when cars are on both sides too. I can understand only having parking on one side. I'm absolutely fine with that. Um, so if, so if that could be looked into, why our stretch, maybe from Manitou to Algonquin, can just be prohibited on the east side and we could park on the west side, that would be fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Michael? Mayor, next up, Dana Andrew. All right, what did you, what did you hear, Richard? Dana, Dana Andrew. Andrew. Oh, you hear it too? <laughs> the only mm -hmm. one, that, okay. Good evening, Mayor and Council. My name is Dina Andro. I'm at 43 Acorn F. Um, I'll just be really quick. I'm also here for the chicken ordinance. Um, I would also like you to reconsider putting the ordinance through because um, we were the ones who started this several years back with our daughter and we spoke to um, mm -hmm. a lot of you who are current council members. We are really just hoping for a land use ordinance. Um, and if we are not going to just do that, I would ask you to please consider grandfathering in the current chicken owners because ourselves and most current owners included will be forced to give up our chickens if this extensive ordinance goes through. So we're just asking you to reconsider. That's all. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Michael? Mayor, next up, Larry Shiner. Larry. Yes, hi, Mayor. Um, my name is Larry Shiner. I reside at uh, 63 Monhegan Avenue. Um, calling to uh, see if there's any reconsideration or other options that could be looked at as far as the parking. Um, we we do have you know concerns that they've uh, implemented now a no parking on Monhegan. Um, we're, we're we would like to be part of are open to discussion on other options than making it illegal on both sides of the street. Um, just have, you know, major concerns as far as, you know, this being uh, put in place. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor, next up, Brian Harris. Michael's voice is all garbled. I can't hear a word he's saying. Yeah, the only one who can interpret yeah. is Richard. And Lisa. Yeah, um, Brian, Brian Harris. Brian Harris. Thank you. Brian Harris, you're on. Except I can't hear him. Brian Harris, can you hear me? Yes, and your address? Your address, please. We lost him. No, we can't hear his audio. All right, Brian, you'll have to come back at the next portion of the open portion. We cannot hear you. Michael, anybody else? Mayor, I see no one further. Wait, okay. Could you clear your voice next time? <laughs> Motion to close. So moved. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. There were two issues that were brought up, chickens and Monhegan parking. And the chickens will be discussed during the work session later on in the meeting. So after it's discussed during work session items, it is open to the public once again, and maybe the residents will wanna comment after they hear what the council have to say. As far as the Monhegan parking, I had a long talk with our borough administrator today, and um, we're going to recommend that the Public Safety Committee consider meeting with our traffic officer, Brian Rowan, and the police chief, since it's under um, the reason this was brought about was because of their recommendation. And um, they're the ones who pretty much know what's going on with the roads and traffic. So um, as far as Von Hegan Avenue um, prohibition for parking, and it, which if you could bring it up when we discuss during um, a new business or oh, actually it's old business, I'd like to hear the council's recommendation that we look at it with uh, the public, that the public safety committee, which is um, Councilman Pignatelli and Councilman Kumala with um, the, with the um, traffic safety officer who is Brian Rowan and our police chief and maybe just take a ride on Monhegan. I'm hoping, and I asked you last time, 
I'm hoping you all drive Von Hegan. I drive it regularly. So um, I ask that you all drive Von Hegan and that the public safety consider meeting with the police to maybe go together and, and drive up and down Von Hegan and, and see if there's something we can help the residents with, with parking. Mayor, okay. uh, yes. Council, Councilman Kamal and I uh, to get, uh, today both went up and down um, Von Hegan. So we do know about the situation. And are you willing to meet with the uh, police on this? Absolutely. Yes. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now we have the approval of minutes from January 13th, 2021. Is there a motion? So moved. There was second. a second. Second. Is there any discussion, any comments? Roll call. Councilman Bialy. Yes. Councilman Kamala. Yes. Councilman Pignatelli. Yes. Councilman Talamini. Yes. Councilman Van Eck. Yes. There are some appointments and the good news is these are appointments for the environmental commission and the green team. Um, Eric Cam has submitted his citizen leadership form to be uh, reappointed. And is there a motion to reappoint him to uh, the environmental? So moved. Second. moved. Second. Roll call. Councilman Bialy. Yes. Councilman Kamala. Yes. Councilman Pignatelli. Yes. Councilman Talamini. Yes. Councilman Van Eck. Yes. This is for a three year term. So thank you, Eric Cam, for um, volunteering to come back. Now the next two are for the green team. And I have Salma Shalmi and Jessica Stroud, and it's a mayoral appointment and I am appointing them. And thank you for participating in the green team. And I look forward to seeing all of you at the community garden when the snow finally disappears, which would be nice. Now we will do um, the Shade Tree Commission presentation is going to be hold off to, uh, do you have a date, Councilman Van Eck? Uh, well, we're gonna do it at the next meeting. I'll mention it during my report, it'll be brief. Thank you. And thank Peter Keycott for um, accommodating us. Yeah, his good flexibility with his schedule. Yeah, so now we have the resolutions. I'll read them and we'll do it as a consent agenda unless anybody wants to pull any out. The first one is 2190. It's an agreement for the alternate public defender, which is for Sophie Sederat, for a contract not to exceed $3,000 without further approval from the council. 2191 is authorized Burgess Associates for affordable housing plan. The proposal was dated January 20, 2021, and the amount not to succeed, ex, exceed, not succeed, exceed 57,500. Um, and uh, the CFO has certified that funds are available. 2192 is to authorize execution of safe routes to schools agreement. And it's, uh, we received funding from the state of New Jersey DOT for the school, Oakland School Safety Project and Heights Elementary School and Valley Middle School. 2193 is to approve the dog park rules. And you all read the rules and um, they're very intricate. <laughs> and they, I think they really spent a lot of time going through the rules. 2194 is authorized refunds of taxes for veteran deduction. And it is a refund of the 2019-2020 veteran deduction in the amount of $500. And that is for Michael Croce, 101 East Oak Street in Oakland. 2195 is to refund taxes and cancel taxes due to totally disabled veteran tax exemption as you're aware that if you are a totally disabled veteran, um, you are exempt from property taxes. This is for the 2020 taxes and it's to Joseph Solomon. And it is a refund of $535.61 and 61 cents for 107 Pawnee Avenue, that's block 5402, lot 19. And thank you for your service to our country. 2196 is authorized the refund of taxes due to overpayment. And that is to Darren and Nadia Reed 
block 1401, lot six, 10 Crooked Hill, in the amount of $3,115.76. 2197 is the authorized refund of taxes due to overpayment. And that goes to 91 West Oakland Avenue, LLC, block 1801, lot nine. That's 83-91 West Oakland Avenue, $4,041.95. Resolution 2198 is self-examination of the budget, NJSA 40A colon 4-78B, authorizes the local finance board to adopt rules that permit municipalities in sound fiscal condition to assume the responsibility normally granted the director of division of local government services of conducting an annual budget examination. And it's set forth in the rules. And um, obviously we are in sound fiscal condition. 2199, approval of the 2020 LOSAP list. And that is to certify the sponsoring agency a list of all volunteer members who have qualified for credit for the previous year. And it uh, there is a list attached uh, for the service of all those volunteers. Thank you for your service. There is a list. If you need to see the list, you can go online or um, you can um, open request. 20 resol resolution 2100. Authorized refund for 200 feet certified property owners list. It's a refund fee in the amount of $30. And it goes to E2 Project Management LLC, Hibernia Avenue and Rockway in the amount of $30. 20 resolution 21101 is to hire a fire inspector. This is a, a part-time fire inspector for the construction office. He will be part-time as of February 10th, that's the effective date, to William Bergner at a salary of $27.50 per hour. Resolution 21102 endorsed the CDBG home application, Eastern Christian Children's Retreat. And it, they're asking for um, endorsement by the borough for the application by Bergen County Home Investment Partnerships applying for $500,000 grant by Eastern Christian Children's Retreat for the York Poe Avenue House Project in the Borough of Oakland. 21103 is the transfer between budget appropriations uh, reserves. And from the current funds, Fire Department Rescue Squad, squad I'm having trouble talking tonight, $1,568.58, and it will be transferred into LOSAP, $1,568.58. Resolution 21104, renew shared service agreement for lending of vehicles and equipment. This is between the Borough of Oakland, Borough of Franklin Lakes, and the Township of Wyckoff for a term of one year expiring December 31st, 2021, with an automatic one year renewal option. 20 with resolution 21105, authorized refunds of recreation fees for the following the O'Neill family, $96 for rec basketball, Stroud family, $73 rec basketball, Pesor, Pesawa family, $73 rec basketball, Gluchinus family, $73 rec basketball. Cora family, $73 rec basketball. Cipriani family, $73 rec basketball. Bergamin, Berga, Bergamini family, $72 rec basketball. Struts family, $72 rec basketball. Altanji, <coughs> $72 rec basketball. Lala family, $72 rec basketball. And Flanagan family, $72 rec basketball. And I apologize to all those families for my mispronunciation of your name. Resolution 21106, authorize a crew time payout for Mr. Badgery, Bart Padgery, the sick, vacation, personal, and compensatory time accumulated in the amount of $60,958.63. It's composed of 240 hours vacation time, 
341.75 hours of sick time, 12 hours of personal time, and 175.25 hours of compensatory time to be paid from the accumulated absence trust fund established in 2010 for this purpose. Are there any, anyone wishes to pull out? Yes, Mayor. I'd like 2199 pulled and 2103. 2199 and 2103. Any others? Could we pull 102 also? 102. And, and Any 104? Others? I just have a I'm question. Sorry, 104? 104. Hi. Did someone say hi? Any others? Okay, other than 2199, 21102, 21103, and 21104, is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Roll call. Councilman Bialy. Yes. Councilman Kamala. Yes. Councilman Pignatelli. Yes. Councilman Talamini. Yes. Councilman Van Eck. Yes. Okay, so everybody pull out 99, 102, 103, and 104. Did I get those right? 2199. 2199, Mayor. 99. 2199. Below SAP. Right, I have that. Below SAP is 2199. Correct, yeah. Uh, you were cutting out. I only heard 99. Thank oh, you. I'm sorry. That's right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, that's where I heard hi. Okay. So 2199 is to approve the 2020 low SAP certification list. Yes, we'll I, pull that I, up. Yeah, I did. I have to abstain for that from that. Uh, okay. Anybody else? Yes, I have to abstain from it also, Mayor. All right. So let's do anybody else want to comment on that? So roll call for 2199. That's we to approve the we need a motion in a second. So okay. moved. Second. Roll call. Councilman Bialy. Yes. Councilman Kamala. Abstain. Councilman Pignatelli. Abstain. Councilman Talamini. Yes. Counts Councilman Van Eck. You're on mute. Yes. Sorry, okay, it's noisy in the background of my house. You're on mute. Well, your daughter could vote for you, I guess. <laughs> so, 21102. Endorse the CDBG Home Application Eastern Christians Retreat. Yeah, I just asked to pull it out because I, I, I wanted to vote separately on it. That's, that's all. Okay. Well, I also so, think we need further information. Um, I don't think we have sufficient information at this point in time to make a decision. I agree with Councilman Pignatelli. So um, does anyone want to table this? Motion to table. Second. Second. Yep. And so we vote on tabling. This is a vote just to table. Council yeah, Mayor, that takes precedence, so the motion to table should be called without debate. Right. This is a motion just to table. Councilman Bialy. Yes. Councilman Kamala. Yes. Councilman Pignatelli. Yes. Councilman Talamini. No. Councilman Van Ack. Yes. All right, so um, Mr. Kearns, will you uh, notify them that we need more information that, that it had to be tabled? Sure, we'll follow up with them tomorrow. Thank you. Okay, uh, 21103 to reserve budget transfer. That's the transfer with the LOSAP and, and the fire department. All right, I, ha I asked to have that pulled again. I have to abstain from that. Okay. So is there anyone who will, who will approve it? Motion? So Motion. Second. Second. Roll call. Councilman Bialy. Yes. Councilman Kamala. Abstain. Councilman Pignatelli. Abstain. Councilman Talamini. Yes. Councilman Van Eck. Yes. Now we have resolution 21104 shared service agreement Equipment sharing. Thank you, Mayor. Just a question for the Borough Administrator in regards to this. Uh, Mr. Coons, could you just, uh, how often do we use the shared services agreement between the other two towns and, and what type of equipment is really shared back and forth? Uh, 
actually, we don't have cause to have used it much, uh, if at all. It was really set up, uh, and we're looking to renew it, uh, more of a in the case of sort of scenario. Uh, if we were need to need or one of the towns would need uh, additional equipment because of an emergency or a breakdown in their equipment um, or some special situation. Uh, this would enable us to utilize their equipment rather than maybe going to the private sector to secure uh, a bucket truck uh, or a front end loader or a dump truck or something of that nature. So it, it just gives each of the three towns in the flow area additional resources should it be needed. It's not done on a routine basis for um, normal operations. Thank you. Is there a motion hey, to approve or any other discussion? Can I ask one more question, please? Of course. Yeah, Rich. Uh, didn't we, uh, in years past, have a um, intertown agreement on the use of a street cleaner? Uh, years and years ago, John, uh, the Bergen County had provided Northwest Bergen, uh, the 13 town consortium in Northwest Bergen with two street sweepers. Uh, those lasted for about 10 years. Uh, and when they needed to be replaced, they were not replaced. So that program is no longer in effect. Okay, very good. Thank you. All right, is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Roll call. Councilman Bialy. Yes. Councilman Kamala. Yes. Councilman Pignatelli. Yes. Councilman Talamini. Yes. Councilman Van Ack. Yes. Now we have a motion, not a motion, I'm sorry, it's not a motion. It's an introduction of an ordinance for 21 code 822 fees for dog park. And you all receive the um, proposed fees um since i don't have a dog anymore i've never used a dog park so i don't know if these fees are um regular fees but i assume those who work on a dog park um decided that these are the fair um fees so with that this is a motion just to introduce the ordinance is there a motion to introduce so moved second roll call councilman bialy yes Councilman Shamala. Yes. Councilman Pignatelli. Yes. Councilman Talamini. Yes. Councilman Van Eck. Yes. And the final hearing? February 24th. So um, you can find this ordinance with the borough and it calls for the fee of $10 if you're a resident and $20 if you're a non-resident. And if you are planning to use the dog park or have any interest in the dog park, I suggest you read the ordinance before the next meeting when we can open to the public for the open portion. At this time, there's a final adoption for 21 code 821, the mailbox storm damage policy. So is there a motion to open to the public? No move. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Michael, does anyone wish to speak on this ordinance? Okay, if you wish to speak on this ordinance only, please click on the raise your hand icon or star nine on a mobile phone. Yeah, that should be what. Mayor, I have Brian Harris. Hi. Hello, can you hear me? We can hear you. We can't see you, but we can hear you, which is good. We need your name and address. You're asking okay. only about this ordinance. My name is Brian Harris. I live at 69 Monhegan Ave. Thank you for the opportunity to speak to the council. I have lived at 69 Monhegan Ave for over 27 years and have never heard of any street parking restrictions. Wait, wait, stop, Mr. Harris. Mr. Harris, this yes. is only this is only open. That's for later on. This is only open to speak about the mailbox ordinance. I'm sorry. You misunderstood. Oh, yep. All right. So later on, when we have the open portion again, you could speak about the Monhegan Avenue parking. But right now, because it's the way the rules are set forth um, in the state during um, discussion of the ordinance, this is the final hearing of Ordinance 21 Code 821 Mailbox Storm Damage Policy which was introduced at the last meeting. This is an ordinance uh, for people whose mailboxes are damaged or somehow um, 
get lost or, or ruined or not just damaged, but destroyed a policy for, um, for replacement or reimbursement from the borough. That's what this is. So is there anyone who wishes to speak specifically on this ordinance? Mayor, I see no one further. Motion, Motion to close. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Now this is to um, final adoption of ordinance 21 code 821, an ordinance amending and supplementing chapter 12 of the revised general ordinances of the borough of Oakland entitled streets, sidewalks, public rights of way and sanitation to include section 12-5.1A entitled mailbox damage due to snow plowing. There are a motion to approve. So moved. Second. Second. Roll call. Councilman Bialy. Yes. Councilman Kamala. Yes. Councilman Pignatelli. Yes. Councilman Talamini. Yes. Councilman Van Eck. Yes. So we are expecting more snow possibly tonight. Again, Saturday night. So I would um, suggest to all the residents you read the new ordinance that if your mailbox gets damaged, destroyed, etc., that you follow the procedure of the ordinance so that you can apply for reimbursement. And with that, we have work session items. And the first one is the 2021 road program. All right, thank you, Mayor. So we're gonna go from talking about uh, clearing the roads of snow to repaving the roads themselves. Uh, we're, even though it's still snowing and we're still in the dead of winter, we are preparing uh, for this year's road program. Part and parcel of that is to do the design work that's required. Uh, we don't have the final list of roads nailed down. Uh, we were going to have a meeting yesterday on that, but the snow <laughs> actually intervened and that meeting is being rescheduled. Uh, however, we can tell you that we're looking at repaving approximately two and a half to three miles of roadways. Uh, program cost is estimated at approximately $1.1 million at this point. Uh, and to move forward with the next step, uh, borough engineer has submitted a proposal to do the design work that's required and further the construction inspection and administration uh, that's required uh, when we actually are paving the roads themselves. Uh, so uh, that uh, is- Prince, Could you explain to the residents how it's determined which roads get paved each year? Sure, uh, there is a list that is developed by DPW. Uh, they actually go out and they rate the roads uh, by driving them, inspecting them. Uh, that list is uh, developed. It's ranked in a priority order, shared with engineering. Uh, and then based on the amount of funding, we make a final selection on the roads that are going to be included. So who is the one who decides on which roads need paving and how they categorize the roads? Uh, again, it's between DPW and the engineer and we develop a final list. Thank you. I'd I'd Any like questions to on this? Yeah, I'd like to comment, uh, Mayor. Sure. Um, you know, I, I understand we have to repave roads. I, I truly do understand that. Uh, but I un also understand mm -hmm. that this year we are going to be facing some quite extensive expenditures, uh, such as the bridge, um, uh, pension payments. I mean, uh, there are several items that's going to cost quite a bit of money. Um, I had heard uh, a figure last year uh, that uh, approximate uh, uh, tax increase. So um, I think we need to, to really look at this road program and see if we could reduce that 1.1 million. I know we bond for it, but um, you know, we still have to put up the, the down payment. Um, I, I, just, I just think we need to really consider all of our expenditures in the budget before we make any final decision. Thank you. Um, Pat, if I can, just to clarify, uh, due to the timing of the development of the road program and the timing of developing the capital and um, bond ordinances, we're, we're always a year ahead on the funding for the program. So the funding that we're looking to use for this year's program was authorized, it it was authorized in 2020. All right, so that money is already uh, approved. Uh, it's already bonded for actually it was included in last year's bond sale. So uh, there will be a separate discussion as part of this year's capital program 
uh, about if you want to and to what extent we want to fund the road program where those funds would be used next year. Okay, thank you. Okay. Mr. Coons, just quick Any questions. Um, I, I know we're also looking to do water main replacement. Um, my question to you is when the engineer and the DPWs are looking at these roads, uh, these they're also keeping in, they're being mindful of any work, utility work that might be done by, by either public service or the water department so that, you know, we put the new street down two years later, they're going to be ripping it up. Uh, yeah, I, so, I see our engineer Sanders up. Yes. yes. Uh, go ahead, Rich. Go ahead. You, you go first. Uh, well, certainly when it comes to our own infrastructure, we absolutely take that into account. Uh, and we kind of try and look at everything holistically, whether there's associated drainage work that's required, et cetera. Uh, when it comes to PSENG, they ask for a list of projects that uh, we have planned that's, a, that's upcoming. We provide that to them. Uh, whether or not they always um, adhere to that in making their project decisions is a different matter. Uh, and maybe John wants to comment a little bit on that. Yeah, uh, we're on record of giving PSENG the list, I'm going to say, uh, three years worth of resurfacing in the middle of December of last year. So we are on record with them on the roads that we're going to be doing at least for the next three years or so. So if they come back and say, um, after we pave a road that we've ripped it up, we could point to our December correspondence from 2020 and say, see, we uh, please resurface uh, curb to curb. We informed you on December 15th, and this is what we'd be demanding from them. So we're, we're in a position then in the event that they do do a long-term or a very large uh, main replacement that we will get, re they will pay to, to have that road resurfaced, yes, predicated on the work that you were looking at three years. Yes, we've never, the three years I've been here, I've never had a problem with them, i.e. Do you recall Route 202 where <laughs> Councilman Pignatelli lives? Right. And we met with them and yep. we said right. you have to pay, they were only going to pay half the yeah. road. Right. Well, they, uh, they only did, right? The Bergen County. And then we, yep. we, were, we had represented from the county. We had Tom Connolly there. We said, look, it's a county road. PSC and G is only going to do half the road. We need, You can't just do half of a road. So do that's we, how we got we have, the road repaved. Do we have an ordinance in place stating that if they if they rip up a road, you know, what, what they're required to do? Uh, Councilman, to Brian? my knowledge, uh, we don't. Um, I believe we do. It's uh, three to three to five years, right, Rich? Uh, I'm thinking five, uh, but it's been a little bit of time since I've looked at it. F five is five is what PSENG um, plans for, and they assume there's a five-year moratorium in any street that they work on in, in uh, northern New Jersey. So um, even though um, we um, we might not have it codified. Uh, correctly in the books, I've been successfully able to get uh, PSCNG to pave curb to curb on roads we have paved within the last five years. So then, I mean, just maybe that's something we should look into. Uh, yes. If, if j just so we can point to it and say, so so it's just a little more, you know, that you know we have a little oomph in our argument. More, more leverage. Yeah, I can yeah. see Rich Rich writing, so writing it down, so it'll be on uh, the someone's next... Someone's dog uh, is barking. Yeah, that's Dexter. I'm going to have to leave. <laughs> <laughs> Go on mute. Um, any other questions about the road program? Mayor, one I'm more question. I'm going to change the order, and we're going to go right into the main... What a main replacement, because it just seems together. And it says Boswell's uh, proposal. Oh no, I'm sorry. Engineering proposal. Yeah, I'm sorry. Did, did Eric have a question? I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I did. Wasn't the county going to pave uh, the downtown area a couple of years they ago are. or last year? Yeah, they, they are. are. Uh, we're working on the uh, sidewalk ramp replacements right now because, um, you know, per federal code that has to be done. And um, I will... We should probably check back with the county to see if they're on schedule with that and to get a time frame on when that precisely will happen. And Thank it's you, supposed Blake. to be next year. This year or next well, year? this year? 2021. This year. I keep 2021. saying it's 2020 because I kept saying last year it's this year, but it's 2021. We're Correct. supposed to have to be paved. 
And again, in relationship to that, I know we spoke about this before. It, it was never completed. Uh, I, I really think we should do a traffic study before they before they repaved uh, 202 RVR, because you know it, it, the the traffic study may may or may not uh, reveal different ways of routing traffic through town, which would be very very helpful. So I, I know Boswell get, gave us a proposal, but I understand we have two other engineering firms that uh, we approved, and uh, uh, I think we could go to them and, and ask them. Uh, to look at doing the same thing and get a proposal from them and see who, whose proposal is better. All right, Richard. Uh, well, ours is better, uh, Councilman. But <laughs> what 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 I was doing on the on the offline here <laughs> who, to who pays his paycheck <laughs> to to Councilman Van X point from the last meeting about the adaptive signals. We're looking to get uh, that proposal on the agenda very soon in work session, and then. By all means, you have the right and the uh, at your pleasure to ask the other two firms uh, for a proposal as well. Uh, but um, I'm, we're proposal late in, in the work session. We have three proposals. We're hopeful that at the next meeting, we'll have that proposal on the table uh, for the council to consider. Excellent. Thank you very much. All right, there's another engineering proposal. Let's and I was going to thank you, Mr. Yukimik, for bringing that up because I was going to bring it up. Is that your proposal? Is that yours? No, I was just following up. Maybe there's a delay uh, that you brought up what I mentioned last meeting. And uh, I was going to bring it up under uh, old business, but I think I'll skip it for later since it was already covered. No, here. you should bring it up now. He brought it up. Uh, the adaptive traffic control. I've been bringing that up a few meetings, and I think it's a good way to solve some of the short in the short term uh, some of the issues we have with traffic and you know, with that proposal uh, that we receive uh, I, and councilman pignatelli mentioning as well that we need to have this study is really important because these these issues are so bad and we all face them we all drive around and we see the problem we just the, had to get the light at franklin ave and 202 repaired uh, so there's uh, and then there's other issues that we discussed and Hopefully this continues to move forward. Thank well, you, Mary. Again, I think the last worst, traffic study was done 20 years ago. So I think the really worst outdated. nightmare is when I'm sitting in the left lane going north on 202 and the car in front of me doesn't put on his signal and then all of a sudden he's going to make a left turn, which stops the traffic. That, that's one of the biggest problems we have. Yeah, I was Oakland. Yeah. All right. Then, so... Um, that would be a good idea to have other proposals and then we can compare. It's always, it's always important to compare and shop around. All right, um, we're gonna save the chicken for last. Let's move on to, uh, did you talk about the, the water main? I can do that right now. Yes. Okay, uh, some of you may remember uh, that the legislature had passed something called the Water Quality and Accountability Act. Uh, one of the elements of that law uh, requires water utilities to implement a program to regularly upgrade uh, and replace water mains. So um, coming out of that uh, and to address the issues that we would have to fix anyway, uh, we put together a program uh, to start replacing the water mains specifically in the Pleasureland neighborhood. That's been uh, noted as probably the area most in need of attention due to the age of the system and the number of breaks that, we are, that we've been experiencing over the years. Uh, so what we have here is a proposal uh, to cover four roads, uh, part of Doty, Lakeview Terrace, Grandview and Mountain View Avenues. Uh, the Grandview and Mountain View Avenue project, and I'm calling that kind of a separate project because it was a separate grant submittal uh, to community development for funding. Uh, we were awarded $75,000 towards that work. Uh, so Boswell's prepared a uh, proposal that would cover all the design work for that, uh, including data collection survey, design development, and a Highlands exemption application, which is required as well, uh, and the bidding phase for $63,000. Uh, and this would cover approximately 3,500 linear feet of water main on those roads. The projected uh, cost based on the latest estimate that we have is about $700,000 uh, worth of construction activity, not including uh, the cost to repave those roads. 
Um, so with that, we'd like to move ahead uh, so that we can uh, complete this work this year. I have a comment. Want, I was going to ask Councilman, do you want us to go out to the other two firms for proposals also on the water main? I can tell you in, in terms of this particular project, uh, Basel's already been heavily involved with the rest of the uh, WQAA components, uh, development of the asset plan, uh, and looking at other program elements of this. They've already been working with DPW on identifying the areas and starting to do some preliminary cost estimating. I think it makes sense uh, to stick with the engineer on this due to their familiarity with the issue uh, and the area under consideration. I do have one uh, consideration, Mayor, if I may. Um, I'm, I'm, I, I forget the name of the street, but it's opposite Lakeview is a bridge goes across to several homes uh, yes. down in the Pleasure Land area. Uh, Are you talking you about Island Terrace? I'm frozen. Are you, you talking about Island Terrace? I'm sorry, pardon? Are you talking about Island Terrace? Yes, thank you, thank you. Uh, uh, one of the residents had approached me a couple of years ago and I also asked the DPW to look into it. Uh, we never got a final estimate on it, but uh, they all have well water there. Right. And um, this particular resident uh, uh, wanted to know if we could extend the water main through there, if we could assess the property owners for the water main so that the cost would be split among all of the people there. I had asked you, Richard, about that. What happens yeah. if, if someone one doesn't want to? Uh, that becomes a legal issue. If, and I think Brian can address that. On Brian? The, with an assessment ordinance. Brian's on mute. I didn't hear Rich's answer. What was the question again? That's legal. <laughs> That's legal. That's legal. Uh, well, what happens on an assessment ordinance when one of the uh, homeowners may not want to be included? In the assessment but, ordinance? No, yeah. no. If uh, uh, Councilman Pignatelli brought up, if they're doing work on the water main, and uh, you know Island Terrace, you know the bridge right. that goes to Island Terrace, they don't have uh, act, they don't have public water. They have wells. So uh, Councilman Pignatelli said, well, if we did this, could we extend the water main onto Island Terrace and then assess each homeowner for uh, the hookup? And my question was, what happens if one of the homeowners or two or three say, you know what, I don't want to pay. I'll, use, I'll just use wells. Uh, the, the answer would be is that the homeowners would be assessed. If there's a oh. public improvement. You could assess it. You establish an assessment commission to do that under the statute. So that explains that. So um, do you want him to look at this, Councilman Pignatelli? I mean, that was a request from the uh, one of the property owners. I, I, I could contact him and, and see if he, uh, you know, has talked to the other people down there and if he, they still want to go forward with that, since we are going to put new water mains by Lakeview. I have a, uh, a client who owns a house on one of those on mm -hmm. Island Terrace. Mm -hmm. And um, there's quite a few homes back there. Mm -hmm. This isn't the first time. There's requests has come through, I believe. Didn't we look yes, at this two, that. three years ago? We Mr. Have, haven't been able I, to do I, it. I don't recall exactly what the issue was. I know that there are some, I think, some construction engineering uh, concerns or challenges uh, with the location, but I don't recall a lot of the specifics. I'm sorry. Uh, John, are you aware of this at all? I, I This sounds very familiar. Um, I'm going to say maybe two, three years ago, this yes. came up. And, yeah. Yeah. and it. Uh, I, I don't excuse the pun, it seemed to have evaporated. So um, we could certainly take a look at the technical challenges, if there are any, to extend the water main across the bridge and into that area. Right. And I'll talk to Giselle tomorrow and, and My first see. question is, can you get the trucks over that bridge? Cool. If there's a necessity for trucks. Yeah, the problem with the bridge is its narrowness, not so much its uh, weight restriction, but its narrowness. The um, ambulance goes across it. <laughs> I know that. Oh, it does? Yes. yes. You don't make a turn from Doty Road, do you? No, 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 no. We go down. We come from uh, Lakeview. That's what I've done um, to visit my client. I would. I can't make the turn, so Wait. I go on the street opposite it and go straight across. Exactly. But, but I recall there was some technical hurdle 
okay. with That's, what we wanted to do. So I I remember something be, being an issue if 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 uh, if if I'm correct. I just remember I, I, I'll it, look it wasn't that. it wasn't as easy as we thought it would right. be. Correct. You're right. Okay. All right. So uh, the next item I'm going to look at before we go to the save chickens for last is um, the handbill circulars, with, which um, I know that um, Councilman Van Eck has been very conscientious about. And then we read that Franklin Lakes has an ordinance. Well, if, if, if I may jump in, Councilman Van Eck, on this, unfortunately, the printed materials seem to have missed the page in the packet, at least it did on mine. So basically what this ordinance does, it's very similar to Franklin Lakes is that an issue arose as to the throwing of newspapers either in the street or the, or the, or the like. This ordinance does uh, two things. The first issue that it addresses is that you're not allowed to throw these unsolicited materials uh, on the street, sidewalk, or uh, other public property. So that's number one. Number two, you are permitted to deliver to private premises so you can throw it onto somebody's driveway. However, what the way that it would be precluded is a homeowner would send a certified letter to the newspaper company to indicate that delivery is to be ceased. And if it does not cease, then they would be subject to a fine. So what happens is, is that it imposes on the resident uh, the obligation to opt out of receiving uh, the newspapers that are thrown on the driveway. Is that what Franklin Lakes does? Yes. Yeah. It's, it's sort of like, a, it's sort of like putting yourself on the no call list right. on the phone. But but that doesn't work either. That doesn't <laughs> work either. <laughs> so how do they enforce it in Franklin Lakes? That I can't answer. I think uh, Councilman Van Eck did some research into that. I don't know if he knows the answer. Now I have to get back to you with the, the details on how they enforce it. But this is something that I keep bringing up, and I think it uh, moves us in the right direction. We can't do a screen share. Uh, I was trying to talk to Michael to see if we could do that, but we disable screen sharing for security purposes on these meetings. Um, I don't want to hold my cell phone up to the camera, the Zoom camera, because I tried that too. It doesn't look very clear, but just today on a short walk, and I'm telling you, I made a I walk down the street from my house, um, and I took so many pictures of the plastic bags, chunks of these newspapers, because, you know, the plows are hitting them wedged into the snow piles in the middle of the street, all torn up. Uh, it's just really a big problem when it comes to pollution. And the, to me, this is impacting our soil, the environment, the water, the runoff, everything in our town is just, uh, we want to preserve the cleanest community as possible. And this really is a, a real problem with pollution. So uh, anything we could do to cut down if people are going to opt out, uh, I think is a good idea. Uh, because I know it used to be mailed. It used to be in the mailboxes. And then it started years years ago, not too many years ago, to be uh, put down in front. And I don't know if that affects the advertising and their what they consider their circulation rates um, because they are circulating to every household. And you know, I, I'm not you know, it's just uh, one of those situations where if someone can send a certified letter and opt out, uh, they should, because as you, you mentioned, we were laughing about the no call list, but uh, many of us have tried to unsubscribe and maybe it stops for a little while and then it starts coming again. So um, hopefully this uh, moves us a little bit closer in the right direction for those residents who would like to opt out and uh, you know realize the pollution problem that we have. You're right, because the calls and the, the, the calls and the letters wrote to Suburban News did not help. Now this is only for unsolicited, so I I still get newspapers, I get the Record, and we get the Wall Street Journal daily, so that's solicited because I I'm paying for that, that so it does correct. does it affect them? Correct. That is correct. This is to prevent, uh, you know, a, 
I was surprised because it happened last year. I got some sort of phone book thrown on the edge of my driveway. Why anybody does right. a phone book oh, anymore, I don't know. But, you know, it, it was just one of those things. It's, you know, it's, it's to prevent that, that information you're not requesting. I and think, I, think I, uh, I would also we say can... that the issue that Councilman Van Eck raised about walking and the like is that, you know, when it, when it's not two feet of snow, when I walk in the morning, I find it less likely that anyone is receiving newspapers anymore that are thrown on the driveway. I think that's rare, except Excuse when, th <laughs> except when Thursday or Friday comes around and it's the suburban, I don't even know what they call it in my town, but you see them all over the place and usually they wind up in the street. Yeah. Well, if you get the Bergen record, you get the suburban inside the plastic on Thursday. Yes. All right. So we'll bring we'll bring this forward for introduction at the next meeting. Then. Great. Thank Hopefully you. Hopefully, you have all the pages. Yeah. Now, and if we could, Brian, if thank we could just find out about about enforcement on it, also. Yeah, so we're going to find out about enforcement. Now let's talk about chickens. Uh, yes. Mayor, Mayor, there's one other issue uh, on workshop before we get to that. Uh, the LSRP services item. Oh, I Sorry. missed one. Okay. Uh, yeah, just so everybody's aware, uh, there is a piece of property along Pond Ash Lake. It's adjacent to Great Oak Park. Uh, we had done some um, testing and remediation there previously because there were some abandoned transformers on the property. Uh, probably left over from the the river project, uh, as near as we can tell. Um, it was previously tested for PCBs. There's no PCBs. There is something there called uh, EPHs, extractable petroleum hydrocarbons, uh, and we do need to test uh, to determine the uh, extent of those in the soil at that location. Uh, that will then inform what sort of remediation and to what level we will need to undertake on the property. Uh, so Boswell has submitted a proposal uh, that would address that as the borough's LSRP or what's called the Licensed Site Remediation Professional, uh, which is what's required for this type of project. And uh, it involves uh, taking soil samples, doing the laboratory analysis, uh, preparation and submittal of the required reporting to the DEP uh, and then there'll probably be some follow-up action that we'll have to come back to you with as well. Uh, the cost for all of that is uh, not to exceed $10,625. Mr. Kuhn's question? Yep. Uh, I thought we had captured all the data a couple of years ago of all the transformers and all the other hazardous waste down there. W where did this one come from? Uh, this was a, this is not actually considered part of Great Oak Park. This is a separate lot. This is uh, not Great Oak Park. This is not Great Oak Park. Uh, I believe it's a separate lot. Uh, and I said there had been some previous testing done. This is follow-up testing that we have to do. Uh, is the hazard removed? No, that's that's what I'm telling you, that there are these things called EPHs uh, in the soil to some extent that we need to further delineate to find the exact spread of that. Uh, and then based on the findings from the lab analysis, uh, the depth, the spread, et cetera, that'll inform uh, to what extent we need to remediate. Thank you. All right, now the chickens. Yes, Mayor. If I may. Uh, since yes, you're from Board of Health. Yes, this is brought to the Board of Health. Um, I, I listened to some of the residents who spoke pre uh, previous this evening, uh, and uh, some of them asked how it began, et cetera, et cetera. If you all remember, we did have a resident come before the council uh, about a year ago um, asking us to consider um, allowing uh, chickens to be raised on private property. When we looked into it, we found that the zoning ordinance says if you want chickens, you have to have a one acre piece of property. Right. So, uh, which meant if you don't have an acre of property, you're in violation of the law. So, in order to consider those people, because I, I understand the estimate is somewhere between 25 and 50 homes, so we don't have an exact number, somewhere between 25 and 50 homes. And if we move forward with this ordinance, 
especially with this provision about limiting the chickens. Uh, many residents uh, would, would be out of conformance and therefore uh, they would either have to get rid of all the chickens or operate illegally, which I know they would not want to do. So um, after, after reviewing and considering the input from residents, which, which I've been involved in, in every, every meeting there's been uh, about the chicken ordinance, um, I met with residents, our professionals, et cetera, et cetera. It, appear, it appears to me and, and maybe to the rest of the council that what we have is a solution looking for a problem. As some of the residents pointed out, um, a solution looking for a problem. I don't, I'm sorry, I, I don't understand. Your is the solution, oh. but, but we don't have a problem. I mean, oh. uh, as residents said, they asked about uh, complaints, and I, I think we really can only find one complaint. But it doesn't mean that there weren't others; just that they were were not officially investigated and and official uh, forms filled out that there was a complaint. You know, sometimes it's it's just about a chicken wanders off a piece of property onto the neighbor. So th there may have been more complaints, but the only complaint we see, it really is, is one, and that was a couple of years ago. Um, so again, we may not need an, uh, such an extensive ordinance as was proposed. Um, uh, I, I think there are certain aspects of the ordinance, such as sanitation, uh, not selling eggs. I mean, I, I, I made a list. I, I mean, I could go through them now, but uh, what I'm asking the board, the council is, uh, is to reconsider uh, this ordinance and let me go through the ordinance and, and, and point out the common sense areas. I don't think anyone would complain that you have to keep the chickens clean. I don't think anyone will complain that you can't have a rooster. Uh, I don't think anyone will complain about other items too, uh, but I think there's maybe five or six items that we could have in the ordinance. And, and by having those five or six uh, items, it would permit people who don't have an acre to be legal now. So we won't have to consider them to be operating an illegal operation. So if the council would like, I will go over the ordinance line by line, sentence by sentence, and keep those items that are common sense. But it's up to the council. Uh, that's councilman, Pat, 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 I went through all the councilman, letters. Wait, let me get. Wait, councilman, I am so happy to hear this. After, because it all started from the young girl yes. who wanted to have chickens yes. and her property was not an acre. And that's how, why it came to light. And the ordinance was very short and basically it was going to limit her because she didn't have an acre. And then all of a sudden we have this ordinance that is pages. So thank you. Now, Councilman Bialy. Yes, Pat, I agree with you 100%. I read all through all the letters we received and there were numerous letters and numerous neighbors letters. And I agree with you 100%. We don't have to be that specific about some of the items that are listed in there, I would greatly appreciate it using your professional technique that you've honed over the years to go through that ordinance and pick out the ones that make common sense and leave the others in the chicken coop. <laughs> you know what? I One of the residents lives right where I live. And, I, and, and you I didn't even know. And I responded to him that I passed his house every single day leaving my house and coming back to my house. So at least once a day I pass that. I never knew he had chickens, never. Yeah, yeah, I, I, can't, I can't see having rules and regulations when it's not a problem. Mayor, Mayor right. I, I just, uh, I agree with everything that uh, Council Pignatelli and, and Mr. Bialy is saying. And, and I just wanna read something. I printed this out today. And, and it's a quote from Thomas Jefferson. And it's really relevant to this, this conversation. It says that government is best, which governs the least because the people can discipline themselves. And we have a group of chicken people here. And quite frankly, I don't even know how this blew up to this level to have five pages of, of overreach dealing with gentlemen farmers that just want to have chickens for their kids. Okay. I, I mean, it, it's just, it's it just, I agree with Mr. Pignatelli, take it, boil it down. If the issue is as simple as 
we can't have chickens. Change and say you can you can have chickens in a residential area and just keep it simple. Take no fines, no inspections, no twenty five dollar fees. I mean, I, I don't know how we got to this. Yeah, but well, again, I, again, it was it was reviewed by professionals who work in other towns and had had problems in those towns. But again, we don't. I don't believe we have a problem. And just let me remind everyone. Even if we boil it down to five or six, and then a year from now we have some type of problem, we could always amend it. But I think we keep it simple, keep it to sanitation and 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 similar items, and forget about as as you said, Councilman Kamala, the the inspections. You know, I understand people don't want freedom of access into their property. I understand that 100. But again, uh, I think there are only five or six items. And we could just forget about the rest, unless it was a problem. It was amazing. Yeah. From three or four sentences, we got three or four pages. Yeah, and, and yeah. it's interesting. I, I just want to point out, speaking to the residents, like like everybody else here. I mean, these are people that care about their pets and their animals. So we're not dealing with. These are people that have a passion for for raising chickens and sharing their eggs with their neighbors. And if there's a problem, they call their neighbor, they work it out. And, and I'll leave it at that, Councilman Picatelli. Thank you for for towing the water on that. Great. We look Thank forward to you. what you come back with. Right. Thank you, Pat. Anybody else want to talk about chickens? I just want to say I think it's uh, cool quoting Thomas Jefferson, I'm a student of history and the founding of this country, so that was really neat. Even has a picture. Way to go, Eric. I did my homework. <laughs> Anybody have any new business? Old business? Council committee reports. We'll start on the, the top. I see, I'll go the way the rows are, I'll, John Bialy. Yes, thank you, Mayor. Uh, water and sewer, uh, uh, the borough is uh, utilizing the I-Bank to administer the project, uh, the decommissioning of the three borough-owned STPs. Uh, the I-Bank process places additional requirements, which we, the borough, and, uh, CFO, and other borough representatives are tending to. The status of the other approvals uh, that are necessary are summarized as follows. The NJDOT crossing over I-287, complete and approved. The New York uh, S&W Railroad approval for railroad crossing on Rampo Valley Road. Uh, it's complete and approved. Minor modification of the borough water allocation permit. Uh, they received the, uh, received the draft approval in January. Uh, no comments from the borough awaiting the final approval letter. Uh, the MBCUA agreement to connect. We received the draft agreement from MBCUA at the end of January. Minor comments. Resubmission being coordinated by John Napolitano, our special counsel to the borough. Uh, Bergen County Road Opening Permit submitted, waiting for permit. Uh, Highlands Council Water Use and Conservation Management uh, status is accepted by the Highlands. Um, on the NJ, uh, on the I-Bank coordination, uh, since the borough is utilizing the I-Bank to fund uh, the decommissioning of the three SDPs, the process requires uh, many submittals from the borough CFO, our office and representatives. The NJ, the I-Bank process also requires a level two environmental review. Uh, public hearing was conducted on November 30th, 2020. The borough is waiting for iBank comments from this hearing. Linings of the sanitary collection system uh, to the Skyview Hillbrook uh, uh, project. Uh, the borough is Im implementing a project to clean, televise, and line the collective collection system within the Skyview Hillbrook uh, area. This initiative is being done to reduce infiltration into the system from groundwater and other extraneous sources. The bid documents have been completed, but there are certain issues relating to easements and encroachments onto uh, sanitary facilities that must be addressed prior to uh, bid. The project is scheduled for a 2021 implementation. Historical and cultural, I have a few people that have called, uh, including Russ, that will uh, be joining me on a committee to uh, put the plans together for the replacement building at the stream house. Uh, I'm still waiting for somebody from uh, uh, Oakland Historical and Cultural to call 
Uh, why don't you just get in touch with Rich, anybody from historical and cultural, we would like to have your input on this as well. Thank you. Um, and we have a, uh, a bridge, a Patriots Way bridge meeting with the residents of, uh, with the representatives of the repres of the rep of the rel residents of Rampo River Reserve, February 18th at 7 p.m. And as I indicated to the mayor earlier, I'm signing up for the water quality uh, drinking water quality uh, NJDEP meeting on March 3rd with the rest of Bergen County reps. You're muted, Linda. That was initiated by Allendale, the Allendale Council yeah, woman. Liz Holman. Yeah, very informative. Thank you for attending. No problem. I know Liz. You know her? Oh, that's right. You, yeah. She is the one who uh, had the seminar about water and um, I thought we were alone and I found out we were in better shape than a lot of our surrounding communities. A lot better shape. It's gonna cost them millions with their, uh, to upgrade their water. We're very lucky people in Oakland with our water system. Yes. That's it? That's it for me? Oh. Yeah. Oh. Councilman Solomon, you are next to him. You know, I keep, every time I see this, I don't know if anybody is old enough to remember the Brady Bunch. When yes. they start, they would look up and, and down. Hollywood the squares. Square. Yes. yes. <laughs> so uh, next to uh, Councilman Bialy's on my screen is, is Councilman Talamini. All right. Um, just, um, I don't have anything for public events. Uh, I'm not sure if I missed a meeting. If, if we could uh, maybe send a note to CHOP or something to, to put, include me on the Zoom meetings. I'm not sure if I missed one or if one's coming up. Um, just so um, I, I could give a better report on that. Uh, finance. We had our we had an initial uh, uh, meeting with our with our committee, um, and we're we're supposed to schedule another meeting. I, I saw an email. I don't know if we agreed to a date, but um, I, I I didn't I didn't read the email. But um, so we'll we'll meet again on uh, the preliminary portions of the the finance, and then and then. Um, uh, we'll present it to our to the to the the rest of the council, and then we'll have our our open to the public portion when we present the the budget. We have a presentation, and 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 people could comment, and we could we can make changes and 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 do things, you know, uh, based on on input from the community. Um, I want to say congratulations to David for passing his test. Um, uh, it's uh, anybody who knows David, he's, he's just, he's doing a great job for the town. And uh, it's really been, been great having someone there um, uh, leading us the way he's been, been leading us in the, uh, in the budget. And uh, we, we were, we were, we were going back and forth for a little while with our different CFOs and, and stuff. I, I, I think in, uh, I think he might be the seventh CFO that, that we've had since I'm on the council. I mean, I mean, it's it's crazy, but it but it's nice. We've had a little stability there, and and just congratulations to David for passing his test. Um, also, congratulations. He makes great charts and graphs. Yes, he does. Right. Uh, uh, also, I want to say congratulations to to the new police officers that we hired. Um, uh, it's it's um, uh, it's it's important work that they do, and uh, and uh, just good luck in their their future. Um, and then um, a special thank you to to all my neighbors. Um, I, I can't tell you how how helpful my my neighbors are on my on my block with the with could with the with the snow. Everyone helps out. Everyone, you know, uh, you know, just just someone's doing the the got their snowblower out there helping someone clean out their apron, doing doing the thing. You know, we always thank the the DPW and the DPW does a great job. But but really, just just I I, I and I'm sure it's around every all over town. Just just um, it's so nice to see what what, what people do. Uh, and and like I, I said it before, you know, I'm I'm tired of all the negative stuff. Uh, so you appreciate the the good stuff when you see it, and it's just it's just nice to to see neighbors helping neighbors, and and because uh, this this is a mess, the snow, and 
and it's it's just been wonderful. Um, and then uh, uh, I was going to bring up the parking, but uh, it seems like we're going we're going to uh, uh, work on that. And then um, just uh, uh, we're in basketball season. I, I I came late to the to the first part of the meeting, and uh, my I just both my sons won their game, so I just want to announce that and. Uh, just a happy Valentine's Day to everyone and uh, uh, enjoy the weekend. Thank you. That reminds me, um, you brought up a good point. I had an elderly woman call me that she lives um, in the college area and there's a hydrant on the side of her house. And she said, Linda, I don't know what to do. I can't go out and dig up and clear the hydrant. And so I called up our administrator and I said, what do we do when we have an elderly person he says, well, it's my responsibility. That, that was his answer. <laughs> and I didn't, I, I couldn't, I just couldn't let her go because I, I knew she couldn't do it. So I called our fire chief, Lou Thurston. And I said, do you know of anyone who could go? You know, and Linda, don't worry, on the way home, I'll just go and clean up her, her I'll clear the hydrant. So Lou Thurston, our new fire chief, thank you. You get a big thank you. And with that, well, uh, Kabbalah, uh, Councilman Kabbalah, that's my next row. Thank you, Mayor. I'm going to keep my remarks really brief here. Uh, planning board, uh, we are meeting tomorrow. Um, also, there's a library meeting to, uh, this week as well. Uh, just a reminder to the residents for library. Library is open from, uh, there was some confusion, I guess, on Facebook. Library is open Fridays from 1 to 5 p.m., just as a reminder for the residents. Uh, I just want to pivot real quick to uh, just talk about two people. Uh, we lost uh, two of our, one of our senior members of the fire department, Don Hoyt, who's a longtime member of Oakland's fire volunteer fire department. He's also an ex chief in Bergenfield. Uh, they had a service for him last week and it was really, uh, it was really touching. Um, and also, we also, uh, I guess John Bialy probably remembers and Linda, the mayor, uh, Kempi Jacobs also passed away. Yeah. Uh, there was a service for him uh, this evening. He was also a member of the Oakland volunteer part, fire department. Um, and one other piece of business I have is now that we're into uh, 2021, we've got a new president. Uh, what I did is I reached out to uh, Congressman Gottheimer's office uh, since now we have a new president and a dem you know, Democratic president, Democratic congressman. And, and I just started an initial conversation with the congressman's office seeing if there's any type of money that might be possibly flowing down to uh, the state or the municipalities in the event that there might be funding for either Patriots Way Bridge or for the sewer project. Uh, they were going to do some research and get back to me. And as soon as we get the research, I want to like to have a meeting with myself, the mayor, borough administrator, um, and, and sit down and see if there is something that we can possibly explore, tap into. And, you know, at least we can say we've turned every stone to over to see if there's money and what we can do. And uh, hopefully we should hear something shortly. And uh, as soon as I hear something, we'll pass it on. Uh, that's all I have, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. I, I've tried. I use the I use the uh, the premise that the Ramapo River is interstate, and interstate means federal. And that didn't. It's, I, I keep reminding him. I say, Con Congressman, it's federal because well, well, it's, it's interstate. It's, it's a it's interesting you say that, Mayor, because there are there is a couple new uh, vehicles that uh, his office seems to think that's coming down the road, um, and, and you know if this does happen, the intent here is to be in the front of the line. I did talk to Mr. Yakimic about this also, uh, really trying to understand how we can position ourselves to really tap into this money should should it develop, you know, should it materialize, and that's that's a big if, but if we don't make the ask or at least start, you know knocking on the door, we'll, we'll never know. So hopefully- He has a very good um, uh, staff that constantly is sending out um, grant opportunities and funding opportunities. And I'm constantly following it to um, Mr. Kunz and Ms. and uh, Michael. And and Grant Van Eck, uh, Councilman Van Eck, when he speaks, um, he's gonna be working with some, meeting some of, the, some of the grant, nothing with your name, but meeting with some of the grant companies. He offered, so- um, but, so but, why don't we just go to Councilman Bennett? Actually, there's one more other piece of information, Mayor. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, and speaking with his office, I brought the issue up about, uh, you know, the, the sewer work that we're doing here. And, and I guess Mr. Bialy is probably aware of it as well. Uh, there's about a dozen other communities that are in the same boat we are. And, and it seems as if the congressman is now going to possibly see what he can do to get involved and see if he can help all of us out. So it's 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 clearly just not us that are stuck in this, this situation. Right. right. Thank you, Mayor. Great. Thank you. So, can, can, uh, not Congressman, Councilman, <laughs> Inek. 
Congressman, that's a long a time away if I stick with this. <laughs> you know, I think you <laughs> Maybe it's foreshadowing. Who knows? Anyway, <laughs> that's funny. Uh, all right. I'll start with the DPW report. Um, so just what an amazing job our DPW does. We all have mentioned that tonight. I want to thank them, the workers, and Anthony for clearing us out from one of the snowiest winters I can recall, at least to the last four or five years. It hasn't snowed so much. So you're doing a great job. And give a little bit of a report on uh, 2020 and um, what they've done. So uh, there were 2,267 2, uh, Oakland-owned storm basins, and they were inspected by the DPW. And uh, 267 of those required cleaning. 101 of them uh, required repairs and 24 required a total reconstruction. Uh, potholes, uh, were, our DPW repaired more than 1,500. If anybody uh, has a service request, um, feel free to call Public Works directly. You could always email me too. Uh, and the, their number is 201-337-8104. Uh, Christmas trees, it uh, wasn't that long ago, but uh, there may be some people who uh, need uh, to have a, who missed the collection. Um, some, I know I kept mine up longer this year than, than typically just, you know, for whatever reason. So you can always, uh, call, uh, that number again to have uh, a service for the collection. And they reported, uh, I got the report for the Christmas trees this year was 1,055 trees collected. Wow. Yeah. Uh, but, but less than the prior year, which is why, uh, if anybody still has one that could be picked up, you can contact and have it picked up. Uh, just doing a great job at the snow removal. Um, and uh, you know, for residents to understand, uh, Councilman Talamini mentioned how great all the neighbors are. Same thing, my next door neighbor always clears out uh, some of that with his, in front of my house with his snow blower, which I really appreciate. Uh, but it is the resident's responsibility to clear snow from sidewalks and fire hydrants um, that are uh, located on their property. So just keep in mind when it comes to that. Our rec commission uh, had a great reorganization meeting. Uh, I want to thank all of our commissioners for their time and dedication to these great recreation programs we have here in Oakland. Uh, baseball and softball and uh, uh, kindergarten to third grade signups are now open. Register online at oaklandrec.org. Uh, summer camp is now accepting camp counselor applications. So if you're interested wow. in being a counselor to work, I know, right? Uh, we're preparing early. Uh, you can uh, same thing on the same website and uh, submit your application there uh, for a, a summer job, summer work. S uh, summer sports camps uh, like football and baseball are now being announced. Uh, same website, oaklandrec.org. And uh, just mention again um, about, I think I mentioned it last meeting, uh, but the, we're investing in uh, sodding uh, field eight, which has extra wear and tear from football. Uh, so the OCC, um, looking for volunteers. Uh, but good news is we do have a new volunteer. So if uh, you're interested in joining our newest commission member, David Dorsey, uh, contact uh, me at vanek at oakland-nj.org. Um, we are looking for people with social media, television, journalism background, communication, or just residents who are interested in helping out on the TV committee or newsletter. David uh, has a longtime resident, uh, his family here in Oakland. He is, uh, came up through the Oakland Public Schools and graduated from Indian Hills. He went to George Mason University, and he is now attending classes at uh, my alumni, Rutgers University, as he uh, wants to become a history teacher. So I think David's going to be a great young perspective to the commission, and I'm glad he's going to be involved with our newsletter committee. So welcome, David. Thank you for your volunteerism. And we hope more residents follow his example and join up. The Bulletin Board Committee is looking for submissions uh, for to have the backtracking on TV. So if you're interested in having your original music, your compositions uh, played, we have one submission so far, still the same one I mentioned last time. But I think this is a wonderful new program, so I like to mention it. Um, feel free to contact us if you would like to submit your music. So Jim Barry is now uh, our chair again for the uh, TV committee, and Bill Sisti is the vice chair. There is um, talks about creating a new series focusing on our town's history, uh, and uh, the first episode should be airing pretty soon. Um, they're also talking about doing Jeopardy or Hollywood Squares and 
uh, recording that on our local programming. So it's great. The conversations that are happening are really energizing right now. Um, the Bolton Comor Board Committee uh, will have Salma back as its chair and Patricia as the vice chair. I want to thank them both for stepping up again. Our news newsletter committee uh, re-selected uh, Liz Lorente as the chair and Terry uh, Casaleggio as the vice chair. So thank you Hi. to Liz and Terry for stepping up uh, and doing that. And profiling um, Oaklanders is an initiative, the unsung heroes of our community. So that's an initiative they're taking on to do some special interest stories in the newsletter about our neighbors. Uh, maybe we could do one about who's helping uh, Russ uh, snowblow the the street. <laughs> I am. Well, but those are those are the type of things. Those really sweet stories about our town and the residents who are helping each other out that are out there. That we want to tell those stories, and we want more subscriptions to our newsletter as well. And I think that's a way telling stories about our neighbors who are doing great things will help increase our. Uh, submissions. I want to congratulate our new police officers. That's wonderful. Um, say, uh, wish everybody a happen, happy Abraham Lincoln's birthday on February 12th and a happy George Washington's birthday on Monday the 15th. That is now President's Day. Um, but i uh, like to mention that uh, the, the two presidents there um, and uh, wish everybody a happy Valentine's Day. So thank you. Thank you, Mayor. That's my report. All right. Councilman Pignatelli. Oh, sorry, I fell asleep. Uh. <laughs> Not because of what Van Eck was saying. No. Oh, that was the most interesting one of all. <laughs> no, but um, I do have a couple of announcements. The first one comes from our uh, chief of police, uh, Ch uh, Chief Keith Sanzari. The Oakland Police Department would like to remind residents <coughs> that it is a violation of borough ordinance 7-10 to park a vehicle on the street during a snowstorm that creates snow accumulation on the roadway. By parking in your driveway enables a DPW to properly clear the roadway of snow. Also this year, the Oakland Police Department has already addressed 34 reports of sidewalks or fire hydrants not being properly cleared of snow. As a reminder, Borough Ordinance 12-5.1 requires all property owners with sidewalks or fire hydrants on their property to clear them within 24 hours after snowfall. And he thanks you, and we all thank you for your anticipated cooperation. <coughs> it, okay. is, it is extremely important, thank you, Mayor. <coughs> it's extremely important um, about the fire hydrants. Uh, God forbid somebody's house catches fire. Maybe it's yours, maybe it's your neighbor's. <coughs> and they can't find the fire hydrant, I'm sure you would be destroyed that um, uh, you didn't clear the fire hydrant in front of your house and cause uh, a, a serious problem. So anyway, so please, please clear the fire hydrants and, and the sidewalks. Excuse me one second. <coughs> um, the other uh, item is the Environmental Commission met on February the 2nd. Oh, before I forget, I do want to congratulate our new police officers. Uh, unfortunately, I was out on a first aid call and returned home very late and, and could not make that meeting. Uh, so uh, uh, congratulations to, to all of them. Um, the Environmental Commission uh, meeting on February the 2nd. Uh, the, we held elections for Chairman Lee Hammond. Heyman is now the Chairman of the Environmental Commission. And Mike Miner is now the Vice Chair of the Environmental Commission. Uh, welcome to new, uh, new members, uh, Tony Bertuna, Mike Miner, Austin Wall, and Karen Lanza. And we do have returning members, Eric Cam, Nancy Krause, Lee Heyman, Jerry Mueller, and Alex Myers. They all bring a certain amount of expertise to the, to the Environmental Commission. And uh, thank you, thank you for, uh, for donating uh, your, your time. Um, all the members introduced themselves, committee uh, updates were given, council uh, updates were given by me on uh, Sandy Beach and by county. Uh, in reference to Sandy Beach and by county, uh, mayor and the rest of the council, um, the, the environmental commission would like to know if we could have the land conservancy look into assisting us with acquiring Sandy Beach and by county acquisition. I know, I know Brian has had a couple of meetings trying to get them to to uh, 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 cooperate on, on a price. 
Uh, I know Land Conservancy has, has come through for us on other items. And uh, I just asked, since we do have them under contract, uh, I asked that, you know, possibly we uh, have Land Conservancy look into, especially Sandy Beach, because that's an item that would really, really be an asset to the town. It'd be a contiguous to our uh, Great Oak Park. Uh, if we eventually have a, a stream walking path, uh, it would be a beautiful asset to the town. So uh, I asked the council if it'd be all right for Land Conservancy to help us. Um, <clears throat> Lee also Lee Heyman also asked members to think about goals for 2021. Um, and in another thing, and I've spoke to Richard about this, uh, so uh, maybe I'll report back to them. Uh, the one of the members walks frequently, like like I I do, and they said the the railroad tracks uh, on Rampo Valley Road uh, going east, or even east and west, it, it is littered with strewn with a lot of litter. So maybe we could ask the uh, railroad company to uh, clean up the litter. So I will meet back with uh, Lee Heyman, uh, possibly comprise a letter and then forward it to uh, Richard for the council to consider uh, asking the railroad to clean up their property. Uh, our next meeting is uh, March the 2nd. Um, our next Board of Health meeting is uh, March the 16th. Uh, no, I'm sorry, February 16th. Uh, and that's it, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. I think With his that, report was just as long as mine. I wasn't timing, though, Pat. <laughs> it has yeah, been longer, so this was not so bad. <laughs> so with that, I'll entertain a motion to open to the public. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Michael? Okay, if you wish to provide public Oh, we can comment. hear him. Please click the raise your hand icon or star nine on a mobile phone. Mayor, first up is Allison Fleeson. Hi. Hi, everyone. Um, Allie Fleeson, uh, 59 Seton Hall Drive. And congratulations um, with the green team. Thank you. <laughs> um, I uh, just actually wanted to ask uh, Councilman Pignatelli, um to reach out to me regarding the chicken ordinance. I'd love to sit down with you. Um, and uh, myself and Dana Andro would like to sit down with you and go over um, what uh, you think we could narrow this down to. Yeah, what, once I once I get the ordinance and go through every line and every sentence uh, and come up with a, a list, I, I'll contact you. Thank you. Welcome, Michael. Mayor. Next up is Tim Parker. Hello, I'm sorry, my uh, video is not working. Can you hear me? No, yeah. we can see a picture yeah. of you. Yes, that, that is, that's me. So okay. uh, my name is Parker, 21 Lee Way in Oakland. And uh, I'm the president of the board at the Eastern Christian Children's Retreat. Uh, that was item, there's resolution item 21102 tonight. Uh, there must have been some miscommunication. My uh, chief executive officer was on the line earlier tonight. He thought that there was going to be an opportunity for a brief presentation and answer any questions you have. So I'm sorry about that. Um, we are an organization that's got 14 group homes for in intellectual and developmentally disabled people. And uh, we are, are hoping to purchase a property uh, in Oakland, as you know, and uh, build a home there for five residents. The resolution, I believe, my understanding is that there's no financial contribution from the borough. It's just an endorsement that uh, you're essentially um, somewhat welcoming us into town. And uh, our facilities are also available for affordable housing credits. So we would love to uh, revisit that as soon as possible and um, look forward to continuing the uh, discussions. Thank you. Um, you were not on the agenda as a presentation. That's what we really wanted. So Mr. Kearns, could you put that on the agenda for the next meeting? Sure. Thank you. Thank you very much. Michael. Mayor, next up is resident Brian Harris. Brian, I see a yellow hand, but I don't see anybody else. You're on mute, Brian, you're on mute.
Hi. We see you, but you're still on mute. Well, he's not on mute. His audio just doesn't seem Oh, he like just doesn't have audio? Mayor, if I may, if you are on a mobile phone, please click star nine. I feel sorry for Mr. Harris because he wasn't able to talk in the beginning. Yeah. And then when it wasn't the time, we could hear him perfectly. And now when it's the time again, we can't hear him. Did you press star nine? He's, but he's, he's still muted on the screen. All right, now, Mr. Harris, now try with your phone. Michael, what does he press? You have to press star nine on a mobile phone, and I can then unmute you. Mr. Harris, if you don't mind, try speaking into your phone. Sorry, we, we can't hear you. Does he, is he on the computer there's also, that. Michael? Y yeah, there's not much I can do on my end, unfortunately. Uh, Mr. Harris, is there a mute button on your computer that you can touch? It looks like a microphone. Okay. Press the yeah. space bar. Then Mayor, then while he's figuring that out, I'll move to the next resident. Oh, Up that's a good Dana, idea. Dana Andro. Hi. Good evening, Dana Andro, 43 Acorn Ave. Um, I just first of all want to thank you all for your consideration on the chicken ordinance. Um, and second of all, I just wanted to um, reach out to Councilman Pignatelli. I know Ali volunteered our services, but um, a lot of us has been speaking and we think it might be a good idea to include a chicken advisory board to kind of help members of the town to stay on the same page. Excuse me and help them through any problems they're having. So if that's something that would be want to consider, I'd uh, like to volunteer my time. Excuse me, I was just putting the kids to bed. I, 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 if I may, I, I think once you see how simple the ordinance is going to be, there's really not going to be an, a need for an advisory committee. More so if anyone in town has questions and wants to consult, it might just might be a group. Okay, that's fine. Thank you. Wasn't that your daughter who started this? You're on mute. I got muted. It was yes. your job. It was. So thank you much for your time. Uh, Michael? Okay, we're gonna try one more time. Brian Harris. Now we don't see him at all. Still can't hear him. It must be his computer. Well, I, you know, I just uh, it, in case he can hear us, we did get his letter, and I did read it. It was quite extensive about Monhegan Avenue. Uh, but you know, I am. Is that correct? Are you call? Are you trying to call us about Monhegan? Yes, he is. Yeah. He sent a very long, detailed email with uh, yes. to all of us with the pictures, yes. which included a sort of a separate subject about a flashing lights by the school, how the other schools, I have to drive around and check it out myself, and I plan on doing we'll that. Take that. Uh, yeah, we'll take that into the consideration. The school that's near there is Manito. Yeah, we're yeah there's so, no uh, flashing Harris. lights like, the others by, like there are by the other schools, which I that raised my attention as well, so... Mr. Harris, since we can't hear you, maybe you could email afterwards. But if you heard us, uh, the Public Safety Committee is going to meet with the police chief and the, and the traffic safety officer. And, I and then you like, could email a follow-up since we cannot hear you. And I, I have just, no idea what you're saying. I'd just like to point out how great Zoom meetings are. <laughs> <laughs> 
Can you can you read his lips? Uh, I can't wait to get back into regular session. Yeah. I'm sorry, Mr. Harris. Yeah. Mayor, <laughs> next up is Kelly. Anybody Rooney. else, Michael? Yes, next up is Kelly Rooney. Hi. Uh, my video is not working, but the. Um, but we hear you. There we go. My name is Kelly Rooney. I live at 61 Monhegan Avenue. Um, I have two things really quick to address. One is the, the parking situation. And I just would like to remind everybody, and I'm glad that the Mayor Schweiger had brought it up. You know, one of the major issues really on Monhegan is the corner of Manitou and Monhegan. Um, I've been the unfortunate recipient of a turned over truck in my driveway due to oh. an accident there. Um, another woman who was hit and knocked into our driveway when our kids were playing outside. So that corner really, if there's going to be an issue, is the uh, biggest issue um, coming down Manitou uh, to Monhegan Avenue. Uh, my other thing I wanted to bring up was the situation about the fire hydrants. And I just have a quick question. Do we have a list? I get, uh, for those who don't know, I'm the president of the Mother's Club in town. And I get constant phone calls from high school seniors and um confirmation students at OLPH that need to do volunteer hours. Where can I volunteer? Where can I volunteer? Um, I could imagine that we could easily put a list of volunteers together if we could figure a way to coordinate who can't shovel their fire hydrant with the um, people who want to volunteer. I think we have that list with the senior citizens. Uh, do you Mayor. have the list of uh, fire hydrants, Richard? Yeah, so, so two things with that. Uh, yes, I believe I don't want to speak for the fire department, but I imagine that there is a list either there or through water, the water department of all the fire hydrants. Uh, and to the point, we've tried on a couple of occasions to put together a list of those willing to volunteer to help for this very specific reason. Uh, we did not get much of a response uh, that was being run through the senior center. Uh, and if Miss Rooney has names and contacts, uh, she can contact me. I'll put her in touch with the senior center. Uh, and We can try to reactivate that again. Um, it is something we've thought of in the past. The response we got in the past just was not very significant at all. Thank you. Okay, okay thank you. Okay, next up is resident Joan, Joan Check. Hi, Joan. I don't see her or hear her. Oh, I see you, but you're on mute. I mean, I don't Hi. see you, but I see your name. I, I don't know what happened. I was trying to raise my hand way in the beginning to talk about the chicken ordinance. But since I'm here, I'm just going to thank Pat for what he said. I really appreciate it. <laughs> Basically what I was going to say. Um, but he carries so much more authority. <laughs> okay, I don't thank you. To give us your address. Oh, sorry. 18 Crosby Lane, Oakland. Thank you. Thank as you. I said, we, we, we want to keep this as simple, simple, simple as possible. So. Uh, I, I don't want to make a big thing out of it. You know, I will meet with Allie, but uh, we want to really keep it simple. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Mayor, next up, Christina Miller. Hi. Hi. Me again, 38 Heath Road. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening. All of you, thank you. And I really appreciate you keeping it simple. <laughs> I, ve I really appreciate you guys listening to all our letters and everything we had to say. I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Have a good day. Happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> Thank you. Same. And the good news is it's not snowing. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> okay, Mayor, I see no one further. No yeah, motion. Motion. Close. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, bills to be paid. Bills to be paid, $121,812.46. So moved. Second. Second. Did everybody review the bills list? Okay, any questions? Roll call. Councilman Bialy. Yes. Councilman Kamala. Yes. Councilman Pignatelli. Yes. Councilman Talamini. Yes. Councilman Van Ack. Yes. And uh, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. So moved. Second. All in favor? 
Bye. 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 The meeting is adjourned. The next meeting is February 24th, 2021. Back on Zoom. And if you couldn't hear us or we couldn't hear you, email us with any of your questions. And everyone be safe and uh, hopefully happy, it doesn't snow. Happy Valentine's Day to everyone. Happy Valentine's Day. Good night. Good night. Thank you.